AB 109 has started changing the face of, of probation, who we're dealing with and how we're dealing with them. Without this program, I'd be stumbling, probably making a reservation to use again. They're able to turn their lives around. It's not too late. AB 109 was enacted in October of 2011. We developed a community corrections partnership and began to look at what it is we could best do to serve this particular clientele coming back into the county. It was a manifestation of just, we have these services in place, but how do we make it so that it's user-friendly? We brought in not only the executive members, and that includes the presiding judge, the chief probation officer, myself, the DA, the public defender, the health and human services director, the sheriff, and uh, Williams Police Department chief, along with Calusa One Stop, ARC, which is our, our alcohol drug program. So we had to come up with ways that would best service our population. We subsequently settled on a day reporting center here in Calusa, feeling that would be our best bang for our buck that we could do in a small county. And for a small community, you think, oh, a center, did we need a whole center? But it has been the best thing um, because everything is a one stop place. Relationships are already established here um, and it's a safe place to come for people. So we work with County Office of Education, began paying for a teacher at the jail and one stop providing the education for GRDs and higher education here at the Day Reporting Center. What do most of our clients need coming back as 1170s and or PRCSs? And that was we decided we needed a cognitive in intervention, MRT. MRT is Moral Recognition Therapy. It's a cognitive behavioral evidence-based program focused on making significant changes for our population's lives. It's a 16-step program. It's self-paced, it's open-ended, so they can start and finish as is um, appropriate for them. They are required to do community service and one-on-ones with each other as part of the program. And it's really looking at their uh, beliefs and attitudes and hoping for behavior change as a result of them doing some real introspective work. I am an alcoholic, so I've been in and out of jails. I'd have like a, five, a three to five year, you know, Good, good, clean time, and then I would reoffend and get back in the system, do the rehab, and then I'd be good for three years. It's just, it was just a cycle. Last year, they were doing this MRT program, and and I was one of the few selected for the initial launch of this program. I think the MRT really kind of just cuts to the core, gets to you know the bottom line of what an individual really needs to see in themselves and address and value. It got me to look at why I was doing what I was doing and the behaviors behind it. And it made sense. Wow. You know, all of a sudden, now I know why I'm doing this every three to five years. So the MRT program has made me look at things and um, reevaluate the choices that I make before I make them. This program really is aimed at those people who are not clinically mentally ill, but are not highly successful either. And really, it focuses on their beliefs and attitudes, which usually from young, early childhood have been skewed negatively. So it really focuses on how we can change how they're thinking about themselves, about their place in society, about law enforcement and corrections and our uh, role in their lives and then go from there, hopefully, and, and change the behavior. MRT for me has made me, has helped me to focus on the things that have happened in my life or that I have done in my life that weren't always positive to lead me to where, where I was. It's helped me to look at all that stuff and learn to, to, to do, to live a better life, you know, move up the ladder to be productive, not to just do what I was doing and be stuck where I was at. It helps them reestablish who they are and um, in a more positive way um, with positive reinforcement of self. Digging everything up, I know that a lot of my problems is what I learned as a child and how those things affect you in your life and how you can take and set goals and go above that. Those things that were done in the past don't have to define them moving forward. It's just a total turnaround. I'm happy. I'm very happy with myself and everything I've learned and, and I know I'm going somewhere. I'm going to be successful in just a little road that I've taken to get there. When I did get arrested and go to jail, my self-esteem, my self-confidence 
everything was just shattered. You see a total change in the person's um, self-esteem, how they feel about themselves, how they integrate back into the community. They're actually working, um, feeling really good about who they are, and staying, most importantly, substance abuse free, and feeling good about that. The behavioral health people are awesome. They've been there for everything. They got me into rehabs and you know they, they, they stuck with me while I was going to my court cases. And so, I mean, they were like, the ones that initiated the journey to where I'm at right now today. All the individual groups that are helping with it is what's making the people that are taking the, the, the class successful. I meet with the AB 109 clients here at the Daily Reporting Center. We go over resumes, cover letters, um, job searching. We do applications. We assist them with clothing, uniforms, but work boots, whatever it is to assist them so they can be successful in the work. Whatever skills that they have coming out of prison, in jail, we use those skills so that we can complete a resume. She helped me do my resume and I took my resume the first day over to an employer and got the job. He was very impressed with the resume. Having a job feel is important for these people because it makes them feel like they've accomplished something. Some people are just beginning the program and some people are almost ready to graduate the program. So those who are further along in the program are very good support for the newer members and also give the newer members hope that they're really going to be able to finish this program, that there is an end in sight. And usually the ones who are further along in the program have a very different worldview and they really present that to the newer um, members of the group. And even those members who are initially resistant about coming, really by about week, week three, maybe week four, have really had a big turnaround in their attitude. And a lot of it's because of the, the members who've been in the group longer. MRT is not just exclusive for AB 109 individuals. We are currently in discussions for incorporating that into our uh, f family stabilization at Health and Human Services because it has such good outcomes. It makes you set goals, whether they're short-term goals long-term goals or you know just a goal for the day that's what I was lacking but going through this MRT program I've been able to set goals I have a focus and now I know what I'm you know what I'm gonna do it's a it's an everyday process you know you have to work on yourself every day I want to be a productive member of society so it helps me to look at okay you're doing this wrong you know fix this this is what's wrong fix it and move on you know and then you just move on up the the latter. My husband and I, thanks to behavioral health, he before he got sent to prison, he was here fighting his case for over a year. And we got to go to the jail once a week and do marriage counseling um, every Tuesday. And our, we're best friends again. I wish he could do the MRT. I wish it was in the prison itself. But he's more than willing to do it when he gets out because he's just, just everything that I've learned shows. Here at our jail, uh, we've started uh, providing services such as the uh, moral recognition therapy and educational services to the inmates at our jail. As a result of AB 109, we've doubled the number of hours that the teacher is here at the jail. That has allowed us to provide more classes such as GED, ESL, and life skills. I think they're better prepared for when they walk out the door. They're not walking out cold, they've already made contact, they already know the person that has been coming here from behavioral health. So far, knock on wood, and I'll say that, we have been very successful. Our failure rate is, is less than 1% and we continue to move forward. Now that's not saying everybody is complying 100% with their conditions of probation, but what it is saying is we've only had to violate one in one year of running the DRC and two years of running the AB 109 program. So we're looking every day to, to improve it. And I think the best thing about it is that it's solution-based rather than just saying, no, you don't qualify or no, we can't help you. It's really, no's not a solution, so we have to come up with some solution for, for individuals to be acclimated back into their community. We're here to help them and get them on the right track. And in the long run, it'll make the county safer. It'll make the community better. And it's better for, for them as well. And it's a cost saver to the county in the long run, as well as to the state. 
I love this program. I love MRT. I think everybody should learn MRT. Everybody should do MRT. I would love to teach it someday. Ha <laughs> ha